Yeah, man. Hello, my name is Miguel, and today I'm gonna make for you jerk chicken stew. So you're gonna need about a pound of chicken parts, parsley, jerk seasoning, basil, and onions, stock of scallion, a small tomato. This chicken is frozen, so I'm gonna defrost. Whenever defrosting anything, Miguel recommend that you don't just put the pure chicken or meat in water and let it soak in the water. You keep it in a container, in a plastic, and then defrost it in the plastic. All right, let me give you a, a different example. This is a plastic bag that I have. I have plenty of these clear, clean plastic bags. They're eight by 12s. The chicken is already in a bag. So I poured water in this bag and then put the chicken in the water which is in the bag so that actual water is not touching the chicken. You just do that, allow it to defrost. This is a chicken, it's been defrosting for quite some time now. I'm not in hurry so I'm just allowing it to defrost by itself. While we wait for the chicken to defrost, let's start preparing our seasonings. This is a scallion. To do as you see me doing, remove dying leaves, cut of ends, root end and the tip of the scallion. I just cut an onion in half. That way it's easier to handle. Peel the onion. Remove the brown skin. The first layer of the onion is the strongest so just remove the brown leaf. Not only is the first layer the strongest but if you take it off and throw it away you wasted the onion too as well. Alright a small spring of thyme. See, jerk seasoning has a lot of these other these seasonings in it already. I don't want to add too much things. Two garlic cloves is good enough. Just remove the leaf. Cut off any spoilage that you might see on the garlic. Cut off ends. Tomato. Rinse the tomato scallion and thyme along with the garlic. Rinse it on the running water. The bowl that the onion is in, I'm just going to put all the seasoning in that one bowl. So measure and add a teaspoon of dried parsley and dried basil. You can use any of these herbs fresh. Just chop it fine. Measure and add a teaspoon between a tablespoon of sea salt. I use sea salt but you can use any cooking salt. Put this aside. The, the seasonings, the onion and the scallion, I'm going to chop those when it's close to cooking. I'm going to dice it when it's close. This is a chicken. It's getting soft. It's not... I believe something happens to the chicken if you just leave it in pure water. If you leave it in pure water, you notice how it does get white. I don't really recommend that you put raw chicken in water to the frost. Either you allow it to the frost at room temperature by itself, or you do the method that you saw me just showed you. It's the frost. I just remove that water. Now this one plastic, no water touched. All the water is in it is frozen. The ice that was in the chicken, the frost. This is a chicken's thigh. Do as you see me doing. A chicken's thigh tend to be really messy. Get in between the chicken's thigh and remove the clogged blood. Trim off, cut off all fats. So you saw, you notice how the chicken still maintains its pinkish color. That's what you want. This is a chicken's leg. I'm just removing the skin from the chicken's leg. It's easy if you just use your left hand, hold the chicken's leg with your left hand and use your right hand to kind of peel off the skin with caution. Don't pull it too much because it's going to pop like you saw it did with me. But if you hold it and, and pull it with a certain force, you can take it off without the skin popping. This is the thigh. You notice how mucky and fatty fatty it looks. Use a knife. Trim off all fats. This chicken is probably old, but it's not spoiled. It's been, it's kept properly, so it's not spoiled. Whomsoever were selling the chicken, they've kept it frozen and they didn't leave it to the frost. Get hot, freeze it again, the frost, get hot. They sell the chicken frozen, almost the same way they got it. So do as you see me doing, get in between the chicken thigh, clean it properly, remove all clogged blood, fat, skin, stuff like that. Anything that's not chicken, just trim it off. Now, because this chicken is old, it's not that old but when rinsing it now when cleaning it you can drizzle a lot more distill the white vinegar on it to aid in cleaning it properly so I just drizzled about two tablespoons of white vinegar do as you see me doing use your finger and kind of rub the chicken and get in between the chicken's thigh and clean it properly when you finish throw the water off and if you can do this on the running water I'm just demonstrating why you see me pouring the fresh water on a bowl at the end of the day, this is what you want. Your chicken should be clean and pretty like this. 
working in any area where you just prepare chicken or any poultry or meat you clean it with bleach or white vinegar jerk chicken stew is not new i actually went to a party when i got this occasionally i would cook it when i feel like for some jerk food this is the onion remember i told you i wasn't gonna dice the onion until close to when the chicken is defrost now dice the onions slice or dice the onions very rarely do you see me marinate today we're gonna marinate these chicken parts so add your chopped onions to the two pieces of chicken in the bowl grind to puree or pulp two garlic cloves add your spring of thyme dice or chop the scallion the scallion is optional if you don't have access to the scallion it's optional this is jerk chicken so anything you gotta have the Jamaican type of seasonings the only thing that's not Jamaican here is the herbs really Ty for telling me over and over we don't use herbs in Jamaica well I do so I just added the chopped scallion the salt about a teaspoon of salt is good for these two pieces of chicken so once you add the seasonings, do as you see me doing. It's best if you use your finger and massage the seasonings in the chicken parts. Once you do that, use a cover, something that can seal the top properly so that all the fumes from the onion stays within the chicken and marinate. So use a container, use a lid and cover the bowl properly. Put it aside until ready for it again. All right, this is a tip. This is jerk seasoning. If you're not sure, if you want to do this recipe and you're not sure how hot you want to get your jerk stew to be, do this. Do as you see me doing. I'm just going to use one tablespoon of jerk seasoning today. I know that one tablespoon of jerk seasoning work for me. It's spicy enough. It's spicy enough for me. So I added a tablespoon of jerk seasoning. Get your favorite brand of jerk seasoning. It used to be just one, but now it's so many different brands of jerk seasonings. Measure and add one cup of water in a bowl and add a tablespoon of jerk seasonings and mix it in. Mix the seasoning in the water. Now this is the tip. This particular part is the tip. Stir it in. Taste that water. Taste how spicy it is. If it's spicy enough for you. Look, moms who have children, you can use half of one tablespoon. See what I'm saying? Notice I just used a tablespoon just now. It's hot enough for me because jerk seasoning heat manifests itself on your palate more times. So when you first taste it, it might not as taste as hot, but it manifests itself and get hot. Hotter. So this is good enough. This is what you want to do. Put this aside until you're ready for it. The spiciness is just fine for me. But if you want it real spicy, you can add two tablespoons. This is a real Jamaican meal. It's mad. Literally mad. So this is our chicken parts. Been marinating for about at least 20 minutes. This has been marinating for maybe about 30 minutes or so. If you're gonna marinate it longer than that, keep it refrigerated. Put to heat a medium-sized saucepan. A big enough pan where you can have, you just need a medium-sized saucepan. The stove's gauge is on four, medium low. After a minute between two and all, and there's no water in the saucepan because you don't wanna add oil to the water. When the oil gets hot and if water is in it, it's gonna Sparkle. So measure and add quarter teaspoon of cooking oil. The spoon that I'm using measures quarter teaspoon. The stove gauge is on four, medium low. Allow the oil to get hot. So a minute between two and you see a little smoke. Once you see a little smoke, that's a sign to say the oil is hot enough and ready. This is a piece of ginger. It's optional. It's a small piece, about quarter inch piece of ginger. The first bend of your index finger. Peel it and add it to the eating oil. Now, take your chicken parts, remove excess, use a fork in your right hand and hold the chicken in your left hand and just kind of remove the onions and the scallion. You don't want to cook those because it's going to get black in the oil and make the oil get dirty quick. So do what you see me doing and remove the seasoning. That's the onion and the scallion that we use. We didn't add any herbs to this because we're going to add the herbs to the seasoning, to the stew. Do what you see me doing, place the chicken in the heating oil and allow. Let it stay on one side, the stove gets it on four medium low. Allow. So you allow it to fry on one side and, and, and brown 
or get that golden brown look that you want before you flip it. Alright, so after three minutes, you remove it. This is what it looks like. Stove gauge is on four, medium low. The pan was hot and the oil was hot so it, it, it starts cooking immediately. So just after three minutes, this is what it looks like. Flip the chicken. When you flip the chicken on the other side, let it stay and separate and keep a little space between the chickens so that it, it cooks, so that it fries properly. Alright, seven minutes later, those gauges on four still all this time. Don't ever poke the chicken with a fork. Somebody made a comment that when you stick the chicken with a fork, the juice, the flavor escapes or it starts to get out the flavor of the chicken. I kind of agree with them. I've never thought of it before, but, it, but that person is right. So while, while cooking, if you can avoid sticking the chicken with a fork when you lift it and stuff like that, that's best. All right, so do as you see me doing. Lift the chicken parts on the, on the side that's not frying and just allow it to get, to get brown. Now would be a good time to add your chopped onions and scallion and the mashed garlic is already in it. So we it on for medium low. That's a good gauge to keep it flame. It's not gonna burn the onions fast. So just add the onions to the heating oil and allow it to saute. Or um or brown. I believe when you burn onions and seasonings like these, it gives the meal additional flavor. Flavors, flavors that are not in, that are not in the seasonings. This is my one cup of water with my one tablespoon of jerk seasonings. Do as you see me doing, kind of mix it out, make sure all the seasonings is mixed in the, in the water properly. I now poured it in the bowl that the chicken was in. So I can finish get out all the other seasonings that's in this bowl. Get your lid ready. We're gonna add water next. We're gonna add this seasoned water next. Add a teaspoon of white distilled vinegar. It's gonna just make the meal more tangy. A tangy pantapa spiciness. Trust me, the meal that mad when you heat it, man. You only a true Jamaican will enjoy something like this. Or people that like spicy food. It's been 30 minutes. Just stir your pot in, stir in the seasoning with the chicken that's fried and brown. So this is jerk chicken stew. plan to do a jerk chicken brown brown stew you can do that too you know you can brown stew it and use jerk seasonings all right so once it's kind of brown and fried enough it's been around the 40 minutes now add stirring stirring this the jerk seasonings in the one cup of water while adding it to the pot once you had the seasonings, what I should have done, you could have diced the tomato and added the chicken that was seasonings that was cooking with the onion and the scallion and just allow the, the tomato to, to saute somewhat with it. You could have added about a minute or so after, or a few seconds after, but it's okay. I forgot and you can add it now. So after the herbs, just dice the tomato and add it. Use the pan's lid and cover the pan properly. Stove gauges on four, medium low, allow. So this is jerk chicken stew brewing away. Five minutes later, since we start stewing, so I would say it's been about 20 minutes, 50 minutes we fry the chicken, five minutes we added the water. You, remember, keep the lid on the pan properly. The stove gauge is on four medium low allow. After 10 minutes, 25 minutes in all since we start frying, since we start cooking, 10 minutes stewing. Stove gauges on four, medium low. This is what it looks like. Just kind of flip your chicken, see what it looks like, stir it in somewhat, cover it back up, 
and allow. And 15 minutes later, stewing. This is what it looks like. It looks like stewed chicken. I did, I did a stewed chicken. So if you want to see stewed chicken, which we often eat for breakfast in Jamaica with the yam and banana dumpling and stuff like that, we eat stewed chicken for breakfast in Jamaica with the yam, banana and dumpling. So if you want to see that recipe, you go check it out. Just search stewed chicken. All right, so this is what it looks like. Stir it in, look at it. Stove gauges on four, cover it properly and allow. 20 minutes stewing. This is what it looks like. The gravy is thickening. As you see, it's starting to stick to the pot's bottom. That's a sign to say the gravy is thick enough. You see, it has a nice jerk color. Jerk meal tend to have a, a specific, a particular color. Tends to have that jerk color. A true Jamaican will recognize any kind of jerk meal anywhere they go. Jerk chicken or any jerk meal is originally Jamaican. Anybody else here you're talking about jerk chicken? It came from Jamaica. It's like reggae and patois. So this is good enough. You saw me add half. This spoon that I'm using measures quarter cup. So I use half the quarter cup and stir it in the stew and thicken the gravy. And I'm finished. That's it. Turn it off, cover it until ready to serve. This is jerk chicken stew. Visit jamaicadinners.com for the recipe, subscribe, like, share, cook this meal yourself, and give us feedback. Alright, so this is jerk chicken stew. Alright, so if you want to see jerk chicken brown stew, look out for that video as well. Alright, so I'm getting ready to serve. So I just take a chicken's leg and place it right next to a bed of rice. I know this gravy is hot, so it's heat alert. Alright, so I'm getting ready to, to taste this meal for you. The gravy is spicy it's, it's, it's nice I'm enjoying the flavor of it right away it's spicy it's kind of spicy With the one tablespoon that I use is spicy I forgot to say but you could have added for people that like butter you could have added a teaspoon of butter at the end or near to the end and just stir it in All right, I'm gonna do the browning. Look out for that one. The jerk chicken brown stew. The chicken is flavorful and nice. It tastes like jerk chicken, but a stew version of it. I am enjoying this meal. I like this meal. It's just nice. It's not that popular, but I'm sure a few people cooking it. I'm enjoying this meal. If men or people that like spicy food, if you want it hotter, you could have used two tablespoons of jerk seasonings. Caution alert! You will get mad like a Jamaican if you eat this meal. We know some people that say mad like a Jamaican, but a true Jamaican understand what I mean. Them say Jamaicans are ignorant. Ignorant in the sense of the temperous. That's always been a saying. So it's not it's not nothing new. So if you want to get mad, yam somebody's jerk chicken stew. This is a mad meal. It will make you feel like fighting. Right now my brain hot. I feel like yelling. Or like the American yodel. Ali yo You know, like that. Or I can chant down the whole place right now. I feel like chanting. I said jerk chicken. <laughs> Let's get hot! Yay! That means it's okay. I am enjoying this meal. I really am. I had a chant, and I'm trying to remember it. I was, I was, pre I had a chant. I'm trying to remember it, but I can't remember it right now. I had a phrase that I used to chant. When, when I was hanging around the studios. Oh 
told you I was enjoying it, you see? And it's just the gravy I'm going for. Like when I said, I'm trying to think, I'm, why, I'm trying to remember the, the chant phrase that I used to use. And the artist that I was hanging with at the time, he had his own chant. I actually got it from him. Alright, like how you hear me say, Yeah man! That's a chant. Alright, so you saw me hate this meal. Go for seconds and enjoy it. Alright, we don't eat the tough part of the bone. I just chew off the soft part. Soft part. Chew that and swallow it unless it's tough. So you saw me just chew off. Chew it, suck out the juice and then put the grinded bone aside. Or the chewed up bone aside. Alright, this is the tough part. If it's big like this, you can use your teeth, which I am not going to recommend you do because you people that are not used to biting bone, you will hurt yourself. So only if you're used to third world people, Africa, third world country, wherever, only if you're used to chewing bone, you can do this part. So this is it, the marrow from between the chicken's leg. Bone, the bone of the chicken's leg. So you can use your teeth and just kind of break the bone and separate the bone and take out the marrow and eat that. But like I said, because I don't do this regular and, I, and me just chewing this, this bone just chaw it or broke it, it actually made my, it didn't hurt me but it, 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 it reminded me that it's something that I don't do regular. I can't describe what it did to me but it, it hurt me a little teeny bit. Alright, bye. Yeah, man!